Now, any questions so far? No? Okay. If you consider fluid in general, like if you stand in the ocean, the current can go in any direction. Okay? If I put coordinate x, y, and z like this, in general, the velocity is supposed to have one single direction. Right? Since velocity is a vector, it must go in one single direction only. But different position may have velocity in different direction. But for one particular position, its velocity is supposed to point in one particular direction. Okay? That direction can be taken to be the combination of x, y, and z, vx, vy, and vc. So therefore, velocity can be thought of as three components, vx, vy, and vz, because it is a vector. For momentum transport, or momentum flux, on the other hand, it is a tensor. And tensor has nine components. So tensor, in this class, I'm going to put two lines underneath. One line means one direction, two lines mean two directions, tensor. No line means scalar, okay? Tensor supposed to have nine components. So its component would be, in Cartesian, would be tau xx, tau xy, tau yx. Oops. These are nine components of the tensor. We just talk about tau yx. By its definition, it means x momentum transfer in y direction. Right? So what is tau, y, tau xz? So it means z momentum transfer in x direction, okay? How about tau zy? That's y momentum transfer in z direction, okay? Did you get that? Good. Now, what about tau xx? By the meaning, supposed to be x momentum transfer in x direction. If you notice, this, these are same direction, okay? So tau xx, tau yy, and tau zz transfer in the same direction as the direction of the flow. These three are not shear stress because shear stress is supposed to apply parallel to the direction. This is called normal stress. Okay? The rest are shear stress. So the equation that we just derived here, this equation, is derived from the system that we restrict the velocity to only one direction, right? But in general, velocity can go in any direction. So as a result, tau would have nine components.
And these nine components in general form can be written like this. YX. Good. Thank you. Okay. Now, if your system of fluid is ideal gas, K is equal to zero. If your system of fluid is liquid, the liquid usually can be assumed to be incompressible. All right. Whenever you have incompressible liquid, we will learn later, but I'd like you to get this first. Whenever you have incompressible liquid, del dot V will equal to zero. This will be proved in chapter three. All right. So, in general, when we talk about fluid, fluid flow, you can have either gas or liquid. Whenever you have gas, K is zero. Whenever you have liquid, del dot V is zero. When del dot V is zero, this term will be dropped, right? So K is rarely used. Because when, when you have gas, K is zero. When you have liquid, this term is zero. K has never been used. So in general, we do not use K anymore. All right, any question? Can I erase this? Now, since we have three systems of coordinates, we have Cartesian, we have cylindrical, spherical. This equation is derived for Cartesian only. Okay? So for spherical and cylindrical, it has another set of equations. So, we like to change from Cartesian to general vector form. If you change into vector form, it can be written like this. And notice a couple things in this equation. First of all, one on the left-hand side is tensor. Okay? That means each term here is supposed to be tensor as well. So tensor, we normally represent tensor using matrix. Tau xx, tau xy, tau xc. Okay. 
This term, the delta, is also matrix, it's also tensor. It is represented by identity matrix. Del dot V is scalar, right? Vector dot vector, you have scalar. Scalar multiplied by tensor, you have tensor. So this term is tensor. Mu and K are scalar. This term, on the other hand, del V is not del dot V. Okay? Del itself is vector. V itself is vector. When you put two vectors together side by side, it's a tensor. Just like when, when we talk about del del like this, this is a tensor. So the whole thing here is tensor. T here is transpose. Is this matrix transpose? All right. So once you form the equation into vector form, then you can use vector operation to convert vector and representing any um, coordinate. We can use starting with this equation and then write equation for cylindrical and write down equation for spherical as well. All the equations for tau in our system are given in appendix as well. You can take a look. All right. Yes. Yes. It is unit tensor. Any question? Any more question? So right now we are at um, chapter 1.6. We will finish chapter 1 real soon. Next week we start chapter 1.7 and then we will finish chapter 1 starting chapter 2. Okay? If there is no other question, that's it for today. See you next week.